This video contains heavy spoilers for Resident Evil 7 and light spoilers for 8. It also contains discussion of child abuse. Viewer discretion is advised. Resident Evil 7 is my favorite game in the Resident Evil franchise. It's the most fun for me to play. It's the scariest, and it has a story I cannot stop thinking about, no matter how hard I try. Mia's plot twist is one of the best plot twists I've ever seen, and it still has me reeling. Resident Evil 7 opens with Ethan Winters searching for his wife Mia, who has been missing for three years. He finds her with a murderous southern family who are simultaneously trying to kill him and induct him into the family. He kills them one by one in self-defense. It is revealed to Ethan that the Bakers were once an ordinary family who rescued a little girl named Evelyn. Evelyn was created by an evil scientist organization called The Connections, and had the superhuman ability to control a hallucinogenic mold called the Mutamycete. She had just escaped from custody and used her abilities to infect the Bakers and turn them into the monsters they became. The son Lucas, though, was scouted by The Connections, freed by them from Evelyn's control, and killed people willingly. It is revealed to the players, but not to Ethan, that the reason Mia is there is because she worked for this bioterrorist organization as Evelyn's handler. Ethan finally kills Evelyn, whose last words are, Why does everyone hate me? Every time I explain the plot of Resident Evil 7 to a friend who's never played it, they say, What the fuck? This game makes you kill a child? And I just have to say, Yep, it sure does. But most people who actually play RE7 support this. They hate Evelyn. They call her a little bitch, a brat, or claim she isn't even human. Why is this? The game does an excellent job of monsterizing Evelyn in order to justify the abusive actions of Mia and the child murder committed by Ethan. They start the game at the end of the story, with Ethan looking for his wife after three years. They hide Evelyn's backstory in files, and even then reveal very few details about her actual life. They let Mia get away scot-free, Operation Paperclipping her into the BSAA, letting her raise a relatively normal family, and hardly even mentioning her past in Resident Evil 8. Our protagonist, Ethan, calls Evelyn a little bitch in that thing. However, Jack Baker, who suffered more than Ethan ever did, still sympathizes with Evelyn, even after everything. Resident Evil 7 is a tragedy, there are almost no real villains. Everyone is a victim. Ethan is a victim. The dozens who went missing are victims. The Bakers, Sans Lucas, are victims. Everyone pretty much understands this, but people don't seem to realize that Evelyn is just as much a victim as everyone else. Her creation was unethical and inhumane. She never asked to be born. She never asked for her powers. She grew up unloved, only seen as an animal or even just as an object. She was intended to be a child spy. She has the needs, wants, and temperament of a child, but with godlike powers she can barely control. This is a recipe for disaster, and it's not her fault. It's not her fault that her temper tantrums are at a world-threatening scale. She is dangerous, but she is dangerous because of her abuse. Evelyn is an abused, traumatized child who deserves more compassion than the fandom or narrative offers her. I will be going through the timeline of Resident Evil 7, citing my sources as I go, and making speculations when need be. The facts lie with Evelyn, even if those facts are obscured. In 2000, the Connection started their project of creating mind-controlling little girls. As stated in-game, the fabrication method for each bioweapon was to introduce the mutamycete genome to a pre-stage 4 human embryo and perform cultivation in a controlled environment over a period of 38 to 40 weeks. As revealed by Resident Evil 8, the embryo was a clone of Miranda's daughter, Eva. The Connections created an unknown number of A, B, and C series girls, 8D series girls, and finally Evelyn. At first, Evelyn was aged 25 times the normal growth rate until she reached the appearance of a 10-year-old girl. This means she grew from an infant to her current state in 150 days. Also, she would have lost and regrown all of her teeth in only 50 days. I can't imagine the pain she was in. Rapid growth was probably traumatic, and so I speculate that Evelyn mostly blocked out memories of this time. That brings us, though, to our next question. When was Evelyn actually born? Mia mentions an imprinting protocol in her flashback sequence that causes Evelyn to trust her and not want to infect her. 
It is implied that this is also the reason Evelyn became unhealthily attached to her. Imprinting supposedly takes place during the first few hours after birth. To imprint on Mia, Mia would have to be present during the first stages of Evelyn's life. In the Biohazard 7 lore book, only available in Japanese, it states that Mia joined the connections in 2010, when she was only 26. I'll include a link to a fan translation in the description. It's not the one I used when writing this, but I couldn't find that one again. I conclude that Evelyn could have been born no earlier than 2010, maybe late 2009 if Mia joined in early 2010. I have some theories about what the imprinting protocol was. I think that Mia was present during Evelyn's birth and heavily involved in her life as she aged rapidly for 150 days. Though I think Evelyn would not remember this time very well, she formed a subconscious bond with Mia. While this theory is obviously speculation, human imprinting isn't real, so Capcom better accept my explanation, because I can't think of a better one. The lore book says that Evelyn was created before 2010, but I'm not sure how canon the book is. It contains statements that blatantly contradict what is said in-game. For example, it says that Jack is 55, but the newspaper clipping in-game says he's 57. We'll talk about some other discrepancies as they come up. Take everything in it with a grain of salt. Why did Evelyn have a handler? Because of her late arrival to the organization, Mia was only there for Evelyn and was not a handler for the dozens of other girls. Perhaps the Connections thought having a handler would make Evelyn more mentally stable. Three of the D-series girls, Dolores, Diana, and Daniela, committed murder-suicide. It seems the Connections were right, at least for a time. During the next four years, from 2010 through October 2014, Evelyn spent her life at a connections lab in Munich, Germany. Little is known about her time here. There are photographs in-game of Evelyn undergoing experimentation, likely frequently. There are photographs of her being forced to kill at least one person for an experiment, but it stands to reason that there would have been more. I imagine they trained her like an animal using operant conditioning. They gave her rewards to encourage certain behaviors and punishments to discourage others. Evelyn is clearly a very stubborn child. How did the connections get her to comply? How did they punish her when she refused? Worst case scenario is that they used violence and force to get her to do what they want. Hitting, perhaps, but I'm thinking something more depersonalized. A shot collar or a cattle prod. Or they could have used something less violent. I imagine a dog whistle that only she can hear. Perhaps it causes pain or is simply annoying. I lean more towards the latter, simply because I don't like to think about the former too much. I invite you to make your own speculations, though. Let's take a look at the language used by the connections to describe her. This newspaper article can be found in the end credits. It reads, The product is a bioweapons commodity, created by the bioweapons division. It takes the form of a child, in this case a girl named Evelyn, which can be purchased and raised to suit individual client needs. Its purpose is mind control up to and including inducement to violence. If the injections are skipped for prolonged periods of time, the product will age rapidly, 25 times faster than normal. Eventually, the product will become insane and a danger to all around it. The product should ship with a minimum of two handlers, each equipped with serum immunizing them to the product's mental control, as well as the requisite stabilizing compounds. Handlers should be equipped with tracking equipment tuned to the product's biochemistry. One of the handlers should imprint on the product as a close relative, either as a mother or as a father figure. This will aid in controlling the product during field operations. The product is ready for field testing, which should be initiated as soon as possible. Suitable clients exist in the Americas, and one should be selected ASAP for test delivery. This is some sort of advertisement created to sell Evelyn and future girls like her. The dehumanizing language should clue you in to how they treated her. Some people say that Evelyn isn't a real little girl. She was just a bioweapon that looked like a girl. But this is untrue. She was a human fetus combined with the mold. She is just as much a human as Ethan and Rose are, and everyone agrees that they are people. Even if she was not biologically human and was just a Mr. X in the shape of a child and not a person, why does she have the thoughts, feelings, and needs of a real little girl? Mr. X did not have any of those. Is that not enough for you? Dehumanizing her justifies her abuse. 
The way the connections in Mia treated Evelyn is okay if she's an it, a thing, a product. And you're buying into the connections' views on her if you think this. There's nothing to suggest that Mia Winters personally experimented on Evelyn. She does not appear to be a scientist, just an agent. However, this does not absolve her of guilt. Mia still abused Evelyn by emotionally neglecting her and allowing the doctor's experiments to take place. The scientist's file in-game states that Evelyn's upbringing had a lack of love, so clearly whatever Mia was doing wasn't enough. The Japanese lore book also says that Mia felt sorry for her, but that means nothing to me. Feeling sorry did nothing to stop Evelyn's abuse. Mia remains incredibly cruel to Evelyn up until the very end. Can we be a family like before? No, Evie. We can't be a family. We were never a family. We will never be a family. Then I don't need you anymore. I'm telling Ethan to go kill that little bitch. Frankly, I don't give a shit about any trauma Mia experienced in the Baker house. Sorry the child you were complicit in abusing for her entire life finally lashed out at you. Maybe don't abuse superpowered little girls. I need to emphasize here that Evelyn is a four-year-old who has been trained to kill. She is not capable of understanding morality the way adults do. Children's morality is focused on survival, at seeking reward and avoiding punishment. If she has been rewarded for hurting others and punished for not complying, this is what she will structure her morality around. At this point, at least, her violence is not a personal failure, but the result of the adults in her life who groomed her. I need you to understand the cause and effect that led her to be the way she is before we move on. Sometime in 2014, the BSAA began to close in on the Munich base and attempted to assassinate Evelyn, according to Eight's Baker Incident Report. This is why the Connections decided to transport her to Central America in October. Why they planned this trip during a hurricane, I have no idea. The connections are very stupid. Let's go through the events presented in Mia's tape and piece together what happened. Alan, you're getting worse. She must have infected me during the attack. And I'm too far gone anyway. But it serves me right. It's my fault she got out. Yeah, it is your fault. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna let you die. She didn't attack you? It's part of her imprinting protocol. I can't believe this is happening. Here, take it. It has her tissue samples. You find her. You fix this. Okay, Evie, where are you? Evelyn got out, she attacked them, and it was Alan's fault. What happened? Here are some possibilities. Either Alan missed Evelyn's treatment schedule and she quote-unquote went insane. Alan said or did something that made Evelyn angry and she realized she didn't have to take this anymore. Or Alan physically allowed her to escape. Didn't lock her up, got distracted when he was supposed to be watching her, something like that. We will never know for certain. Evelyn runs around the ship and kills various members of the crew. Why? Maybe she thinks they're all part of the connections and responsible for her predicament. Maybe she truly is, quote unquote, insane. Maybe she was just angry and wanted to take it out on someone. Again, we will never know. After having zero autonomy for her entire life, it makes sense that Evelyn would go berserk at a tiny taste of freedom. How old were you when you truly understood death? Evelyn is only four years old. I also wonder how much she can understand death when the minds of everyone she kills are uploaded to the Megamyce and she can still feel their presence. Does she understand that for most people, death is final? Normally, when an abused child lashes out at those around them, people don't die. This was wrong of her, but I'm not sure you can expect differently from a superhuman child who has been trained from birth to kill. This is something she needs to be taught was wrong, but not something that makes her irredeemable. Are you mad at me, Mommy? No, Evie, I I'm not mad. Wait, what did you call me? I don't want to live at the lab anymore. I want a house, and I want you to be my mommy. Okay, Evie, I I'll be your mommy. Just, just come back with me, right now, okay? Where are you, Evie? 
<laughs> Evie, wait! Evelyn asks Mia to be her mommy, and Mia lies and says yes. Evelyn is not scary. This is not evil. This is a normal thing for a child to want. She's attached to Mia because of the imprinting protocol Mia chose to participate in. It's Mia's own damn fault that this is happening. Her attachment to Mia is not creepy, even without the imprinting protocol. She is not being possessive. She has no autonomy or control over her own life, and Mia was partially responsible for that. It's Evelyn's superhuman abilities that cause this to be dangerous. Her behavior and feelings are not dangerous. They are normal. How did you get here? Where's Evie? She's out of control. Without the treatments, she's deteriorating. Well, it's a good thing we're already dying. <coughs> Don't say that. She trusts you. That little bitch, she never trusted. Okay, wait. Evie, no, Evie, Evie. Ellen, listen. I didn't mean to call you that. She's Evie, trying to take to, control. To, you have to fight her. <laughs> Evelyn, stop! Stop! Right now! Don't touch me, don't! Alan deserved it, honestly, so I'm not even going to comment on that. What's really interesting about this scene is the fact that Evelyn infects Mia. Earlier, Mia said that it was her imprinting protocol that kept Evelyn from infecting her. Why isn't it working now? Here's my theory. Evelyn saw that Mia would not stand up for her when Alan called her a little bitch and realized Mia did not love her and was lying about being willing to adopt her. She realized that Mia would not love her on her own and infected her to influence her to do so. Again, it is her superhuman abilities that make this dangerous. It is normal for a child to expect a caretaker to love and take care of her. According to the date on the tape, the ship wrecked on October 5th, but Mia and Evelyn weren't rescued by the Bakers until the 10th. Why did the writers purposefully leave a five-day gap? What happened during those five days? I'm not sure how to answer that. Anyway, Evelyn was found by Jack Baker on October 10th, 2014, as shown in the events of the Daughters DLC. Jack finds Evelyn and carries her home. He puts her presumably unconscious body in bed. Marguerite intends to make her food, and Zoe intends to clean and dress her. Evelyn infects the Bakers, and they immediately go crazy with attacking one another and themselves. I'm not sure how canon the Daughters DLC actually is. The events do not line up with what we are told in-game about how Evelyn's infection took place. The lab reports state that infection occurs slowly and takes weeks to fully take over the subject. The first stage is hallucination. The subjects see or hear Evelyn's projections. The second stage is self-mutilation. And the third stage is complete takeover. The Daughters DLC does not line up with this timeline. They are already at the self-mutilation stage within minutes of physical contact with Evelyn. In game, even, the infection took weeks. Marguerite had enough time to go to the hospital for her symptoms and receive a letter back. We see Ethan go through the exact same infections that the Bakers did, and he did not reach the second stage in the two-ish days he was there. Also, the Good Endings End card states that Evelyn aged as the months went by, which is not true. She aged all at once at the very end. I'll explain this more later. So... Take the DLC with a grain of salt. Decide how much of it you consider to be canon. So, what's the deal with Evelyn's obsession with family? Here's what one of the scientist's files says. This is just speculation, but it could be that she instinctively understands that a family unit is better suited to blending into social groups than a lone girl. On the other hand, well, a sentimental sort might suggest that she's making up for a perceived lack of love in her quarantined upbringing. A parent's love. This does not make sense. The nuclear family is not inevitable. Sure, a child would instinctively seek out adult attention, protection, and care, 
though she wouldn't instinctively know that a family is a working father, a mother who stays at home and cooks, and 2.5 kids. Someone taught her that, and they don't want to own up to it. Also, why did she control the bakers when they would have taken care of her anyway? Some people say, it's just bad writing, they needed it for the plot, but I disagree. I think it makes sense and is incredibly tragic. Evelyn has never experienced love, and therefore does not know how love is supposed to work. She doesn't understand that love is supposed to be unconditional, and she doesn't deem herself worthy of love. She doesn't think anyone would choose to love her of their own accord. If Mia didn't love her, then why would the bakers? Of course she thought she had to force them to. I like to imagine what would happen if, for some reason, Evelyn was unable to use her abilities after the crash. She got to see that there were people out there who would take care of her without being infected. From October 10th, 2014 to July 19, 2017, Evelyn lives with the bakers and has them kidnap various people in an attempt to add them to the family. I'll list some facts and then make some speculations. On January 16, 2015, Lucas sends an email to the Connections, saying he has been freed from Evelyn's control for about a week. On November 4, 2015, Mia is imprisoned in the guest house, where Ethan eventually finds her. The lore book states that Evelyn imprisoned Mia because she was unstable, but that's not the case. Lucas's email to the Connections reads, that bitch Mia is still somewhere in between Evie La La Land and reality. She gets pretty violent, so I locked her up in a cell. I thought maybe Evelyn would get mad since Mia's her favorite and all, but she doesn't seem to care. She actually goes and visits her sometimes. She thinks Mia's her mommy. Like I said, your bioweapon is fucked up. On July 22, 2016, Lucas writes a journal entry that reads, Not much change. She just plays with dolls all day. Turned two guys into molded today. On August 12, 2016, Lucas writes a journal entry that reads, After playing ball with Dad, she started complaining about being tired, turned one guy into a fat molded. I think it's important to note that Evelyn spent much of her time acting like a child. According to Lucas, Evelyn spending all day playing with dolls or playing ball with Jack was a normal day. On August 26, 2016, Evelyn begins to physically deteriorate. Lucas sends an email about it on September 1st. The Connections advertisement of Evelyn, found in the end credit sequence, says, If the injections are skipped for prolonged periods of time, the product will age rapidly, 25 times faster than normal. This is not what happened. Evelyn maintained her physical appearance as a 10-year-old for almost two years, and she did not age 25 times faster than normal. She did not age into a teenager, and then a young adult, and then an adult, and then an elder. As Lucas puts it, she became old all of a sudden, with graying, thinning hair and wrinkling skin. On June 1st, 2017, the Urbex team called the Sewergators visit the baker's guest house. Pete and Andre are killed. Clancy is not. From June 1st to the 2nd, Bedroom, Nightmare, and 21 DLCs take place. On June 2nd, Lucas plays his happy birthday game with Clancy, and Clancy dies. On July 18th, 2017, influenced by Evelyn, Mia sends an email to Ethan telling him to find her. On July 19th, the events of the game take place. And on July 20th, Ethan finally kills Evelyn. Before we move on, I need to reiterate that Evelyn never actually escaped from the connections. Lucas started working with them after he was freed performing experiments on Evelyn in their stead. In the Not A Hero DLC, we can find a cell with a bed, a wheelchair, and dolls in it. Did Evelyn ever stay here? Lucas intends to use Evelyn for his own purposes, exactly like the Connections once did. She was never free. Finally, it's time to discuss how Evelyn's powers work. I've been waiting for this. First, Evelyn infects a target through skin-to-skin -skin contact, as I've discussed, it takes weeks to finalize, but the target's cells are replaced with the mutamycete, and the target gains regenerative abilities, and eventually forms a psychic bond with Evelyn. Now, Evelyn's abilities are not one-to-one -one mind control. Here's what Jack has to say about them. So she infects you, and then she takes control? No. Not exactly, son. She just... She forces a way into your mind, your soul. You 
can't fight back. You are connected to her, and you can't resist the urge to. Oh, you're a, you're a different person after that. I also know her abilities are not quite mind control, because the bakers do not always act in her interest. In the Bedroom DLC, Marguerite says that Evelyn wants Clancy to be her big brother, and yet Marguerite tries to kill him. For another thing, Evelyn wants Ethan alive through most of the game. She wants him to survive the next few weeks to become like the Bakers, because she wants him to be her father. The Bakers' attempts to kill him are not her wishes. Listen to what Jack says. I was going to be your father. Now she says he will be her father. No, 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 no. I will find him. And I will make him suffer. He clearly states that one, Evelyn wants Ethan to be her father. And two, Jack is trying to kill Ethan against Evelyn's wishes because he doesn't want to be replaced. Marguerite's attempts to kill him, too, are against Evelyn's wishes, seeing as Evelyn still wants him alive at the end of the game. Oh, Evie's gonna be heartbroken! I believe Evelyn is a reverse empath, and her infected feel her emotions as if they are their own. This is why the Bakers become so violent and are not a happy family while infected. Evelyn is angry and in pain, and doesn't know where to direct it, and so are the Bakers. How many of the kidnapped people were killed because of the Bakers' uncontrollable anger, and not because Evelyn directly wished it? How many people were killed in Lucas's sick games? This cannot be known, but it seems that a lot of the people were intended to join the family. The Connections advertisement says that Evelyn would go insane without regular treatment. What does this mean? That's not a very scientific word. Is she experiencing delusions? Are her fits of rage due to a chemical imbalance? How responsible is she for all of the murders? I don't want to completely dismiss Evelyn's culpability for her actions, but I also wonder just what they mean by insane. I waited for the Shadows of Rose DLC to come out before releasing this video, in case it added any more lore. It did not. I think it changes nothing and is honestly not worth addressing, but I know someone will bring it up, so I'm going to add a short segment. Click on the conclusion timestamp to skip this part if you don't want spoilers. A quick summary of the DLC is this. A 16-year-old lets the ghost of a first grader bully her. Evelyn's taunts are childish, but Rose still gets pretty offended by them. Nearly all of Evelyn's taunts, though, are actually about herself. Listen to how she stumbles over her words. You're worthless! Nothing! A, a freak with no friends! <laughs> I can't believe how useless I am! I wonder no one loves me. What now? Back up! The DLC could have explored the parallels between Rose and Evelyn. Rose grew up with love, and Evelyn grew up without, and this is how it changed Evelyn. Instead, the DLC pits one traumatized child against another, showing that one is a good victim, and the other is a bad victim. Rose sees the tiny crying child in front of her, and asks, what now? All of this is revealed to have taken place before the cutscene at the end of 8. So that means Rose beats Evelyn, sees her crying, showing her vulnerability and that she really is just a child. Being compared to her enrages her? That makes Rose look like such a dick. What a waste this DLC was. What I'm most upset about, though, is what this means for Evelyn. She's been suffering, and her suffering has no end in sight. She's still alone and unloved, and she can't even get some sympathy from Rose, who is so similar to her. It's unbelievably cruel. Well, that's the wrong word. I knew this was coming. It's cruel, just as everything else has been to her. I have been such a good girl! Whether or not superpowered little girls are capable of evil is a purely fictional debate. Evelyn is not real. The people she killed are not real. None of it is.
The writers chose to frame Evelyn as unsympathetically as possible, begging the question, why? By monsterizing Evelyn, the narrative is able to justify the abusive actions of its heroes. To be honest, I don't think it matters how many people Evelyn killed. This is a recurring trope in horror media, where abused children are portrayed as evil for exhibiting normal childlike trauma responses by combining them with fantastical elements like superpowers. According to Jeffrey Jerome Cohen's Monster Theory, horror monsters are the products of real societal fears made flesh. The spooky little girl represents a societal fear of abused children who lash out at their abusers and bystanders alike. I find the trope to be incredibly problematic considering how poorly traumatized children are treated in real life, even by those who are not their abusers. Real traumatized children can be difficult. They can lash out, get into fights, misbehave, but they still deserve to be treated with compassion. As someone who has worked with foster children before, I care deeply about the subject. Evelyn's desire for love was not selfish. It is the need of all children. If someone, sometime, showed her the love she needed, perhaps this could have all been avoided. Even so, there was no possible happy ending for Evelyn. The way I see it, there are only three other ways this could have gone. The BSAA succeeds in taking the Connections base in Munich and assassinating Evelyn. The Annabelle never crashes, and Evelyn stays in the Connections' custody, eventually becoming a child soldier. Mother Miranda takes Evelyn to be a vessel for Eva and sacrifices her. Evelyn never receives justice. Mia never admits that what she did in working with the Connections was wrong and is still cruel towards her. Mia never faces any legal consequences for being a bioterrorist and effectively gets away with it. She is able to live out a relatively normal life with her family. Ethan also calls Evelyn a little bitch and continues to dehumanize her after her death, calling her that thing Evelyn likely to justify to himself the fact that he just killed a child. Ethan is never told what Mia did. The Baker Incident Report in 8 says, As a sign of appreciation for Mia's cooperation, the BSAA has not divulged her involvement with the connections to Ethan. He isn't an idiot, I'm sure he suspects something, but he doesn't care enough to actually dig any deeper. He remains willfully ignorant because he loves her. It's not fair. Even after everything he'd been through, Jack Baker still sympathized with Evelyn until the very end. Evelyn was dangerous, but she was only dangerous because of her abuse. She did not deserve to die, as many have said. Jack knows that she will, but he is clearly not happy about it. He loved her. His love didn't change anything. It couldn't save anyone. But it was there, and it mattered. I love tragedy. I love Euripides. I love Sophocles. I love Shakespeare. Aristotle defines tragedy as an imitation of an action that is serious, complete, and of a certain magnitude, with incidents arousing pity and fear to accomplish catharsis with or to provide relief from strong emotions. Resident Evil 7 does not provide catharsis. It is needlessly cruel. Evelyn is dehumanized constantly, and the writing makes no effort to be fair with her. If she died but was allowed more sympathy, it would perhaps be better. If they went into more detail about her trauma, or didn't hide it in endlessly long files, or didn't have the main characters call her a bitch, or didn't let her abuser get away scot-free, it would perhaps have been better. But they didn't. I love Resident Evil 7. It's my favorite Resident Evil game. But I am also deeply disappointed with it. If you want Evelyn to have a happy ending, just remember that Jack sympathized with her and they're both in the Mega My seat now. I imagine Jack will reach out to her and try to make things right. It's in character. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more horror video essays, as I at least have one other in the works.